Hi everybody and welcome back to another Sheer Smokes and you join me today here at uh, Vickers Bridge which is about two or three miles outside my old hometown of Dollar and uh, it's quite a nice morning so far it was a bit frosty when I left work in the early hours uh, of this morning I had to scrape the car uh, but um, yeah it's uh, it's quite mild now and um, this is a really nice uh, peaceful tranquil spot and uh, of course we're still uh, involved with the River Devon here at uh, Vickers Bridge. Now I did a video, um, it's probably about a year ago now, uh, which you'll, you'll find in the, I think by the river section, um, and it gives you a little brief history um, of, the, of the Vickers Bridge which is just behind me, over my shoulder, uh, and a little bit of its uh, macabre history as well. So if you're interested in that, that's worth uh, that's worth checking out. So this morning, um, this is actually my second choice of filming. Uh, my first choice was going to be Salzgarth House. You may remember a couple of videos ago I did uh, a little trip to Salzgarth Mine. So about a few hundred yards just down from the, the entrance to the old um, coal, coal mine, there's actually a house, a uh, Salzgarth House. And uh, it's now private property, so I was unable to film, um, but I did meet with the new owner, um, who very kindly walked around the grounds with me, and I was able to get a few a few shots. Um, the reason for my planned visit there uh, was there is a slight tenuous uh, family link to the house, which I'll come to in a second. Um, but the house itself at Salzgarth um, has quite a history all of its own. So I have my trusty journal with me, just to keep me right on the facts. So Salzgarth House, uh, originally built around 1870 uh, to a, a family um, coming from Stirling. Uh, I believe the family had links to the tea sugar trade, uh, as well as importing uh, Virginia tobacco, which is uh, a bit of interest to us. Um, now the family home um, changed hands quite a few times throughout its, its history. Um, staying a family home for, for quite a bit of time uh, before becoming, I believe, a care home and then latterly a hotel. Uh, the hotel itself ran into financial difficulties due to licensing laws uh, and is now uh, back to being a, a private um, family home. So my reason for visiting Solvgar's house this morning uh, was that there's a slight tenuous uh, family link to the house, uh, well the history of the house. And I go back to the 1930s when a young entrepreneur by the name of Walter Alexander uh, made the house his family home. Now in the early years Walter and I believe his brother uh, ran a bicycle repair shop and uh, they had the use of a very basic uh, pickup truck with solid wheels and they used this on the weekends to ferry passengers back and forth from uh, local football matches and this became quite a lucrative business and at the introduction of the rubber tyre then his business idea really took off and at that point uh, Walter was way ahead of his time planning for uh, local transport and in 1913, he founded his own company, Alexander Coachworks. And it's this part of the history where the, our family link kicks in. Uh, my granddad, uh, on my father's side, Grandad Shearer, uh, he originally came from the Highlands up there in Inverness. And um, at the start of World War I, he joined his local regiment, which was the Seaforth Highlanders at that point. based in Fort George. I believe he joined with five of his brothers. Um, 
and of course they were sent off to France and they uh, fought at the Somme. So my granddad uh, entered the regiment as a as a private and um, through the war years he rose to the rank of sergeant and in that time he was awarded the military medal and he was mentioned in the London Gazette in June 1918 uh, for the award of the military medal. He was then mentioned again in the London Gazette in 1919 where he was awarded it again um, thus having the military medal and bar. And when leaving the army, uh, my granddad was a very keen golfer and became uh, a greenkeeper. And he actually helped design the uh, local golf course at Bonnybridge, just outside Falkirk. And at that time, he lived in the greenkeeper's cottage with my gran. And that's actually where my dad uh, was born. And from there, he then moved on to a place called Denny. Now, during World War Two, my granddad was heavily involved with the Home Guard, um, sort of civil defence. Uh, again, receiving another medal for his um, services uh, during that time. And it was here, um, after the war, that my granddad became uh, a bus inspector for Alexander Buses, thus getting to know Walter um, through their shared passion of golf um, quite well. And uh, Walter Alexander asked my granddad to design uh, a golf course, a mini golf course, in the grounds at Salisgrove House. So the purpose of the visit today was really to see if there's anything left um, off this uh, golf course. I mean, it has been a fair few years um, since that was done, so um, as I said, the house has changed hands um, a good few times and uh, a lot of changes um, throughout those years. Um, but having met the owner today, we took a walk round and we both agreed on what looked like the most likely site um, for for a golf course. Um, it was quite an open bit of land. Uh, the other part of the house grounds are surrounded by um, deep forest, so uh, unlikely it would be there. So um, here's a snapshot anyway, just to uh, share that view with you. So although um, there's nothing really there um, that would stand out as a golf course, it was nice just to walk round the grounds knowing uh, that my granddad um, had been there at some point and um, had had a good uh, relationship through golf um, with the owner, Walter Alexander. And uh, of course I never knew my granddad. He died uh, long before I was born. Uh, but thankfully my dad um, kept hold of a few things and plus always had loads of stories about my granddad so I do feel as though I do kind of know him um, so it's nice to kind of as I say just walk in his footsteps back through those uh, those grounds um, now one of the pieces of memorabilia that I do have uh, from the, the war years is uh, this item here which uh, was given to my granddad by a German prisoner of war In my granddad's town of Denny, where my dad uh, grew up, uh, there was a prisoner of war camp um, for quite a few years. As for Walter Alexander, um, he lived and died at Salzgirth, uh, dying in 1959. His wife dying um, there a few years earlier. It was nice to meet the owner and to see it uh, being back in the use as a family home. Um, after being left abandoned um, for a few years um, after the, the fall of the hotel and of course uh, the Covid years so yeah great to see it's, uh, it's back to what it was originally uh, built for so a rather nice backdrop to uh, my pipe this morning um, as I enjoy the rest of my day off and the pipe I brought along is my Savinelli cocktail 
with the fishtail stem. And it's just nice sitting back here as the River Devon slowly uh, flows by. And the uh, tobacco I have today is quite a tasty one. And it's the Wilkie Tobacco Company, 71st Street. It's a ribbon cut. Uh, now there is a couple of toppings on There's a whiskey, whiskey with an E, so I believe uh, that may be an Irish whiskey or uh, a bourbon of some kind. Um, not really sure. Couldn't find out what it is. Um, but there is another topping of a cocoa chocolate. And that comes through right at the front. And uh, even when you open the jar, the smell is just uh, just amazing. And I've had this since last year. And it still is uh, still as good as it was when I first got it. Um, you get hit right away with a kind of nutty chocolate cake. And the smell from the smoke, even outdoors, um, is much the same. And amazingly, it's one of these tobaccos that actually tastes as it smells. And um, yeah, it's very pleasurable, um, especially on a on a morning like this. So that was a little history about uh, one of the local buildings, um, which I hope you found of of some interest. Um, and it was nice to chat about my uh, my other granddad, who I've not mentioned before. Um, as I said, I didn't get a chance to meet him, but uh, through my dad. And his stories, I feel, as do I do know him. Um, having talked to my mum, I uh, don't believe Grandad uh, smoked, uh, unlike Mother Grandad. Um, but uh, yeah, it's nice to, to give him a bit of a mention and a bit of a, a recognition uh, for what he did in his life. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm glad I did that today. So as I normally do, I'm just going to spend the rest of the morning here, uh, possibly uh, fill another bowl as I've still got some uh, coffee left in the flask and um, yeah, just while away the next hour or so here. Um, so thanks again for uh, tuning in, um, always appreciated and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week and uh, until the next video, as always, my name's Shearer. Enjoy your smokes. Mm -hmm.